in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel, as follows. Amos is plotting against you in the heart of the house of Israel. The country can no longer tolerate what he keeps saying, for this is what he says. Jeroboam is going to die by the sword, and Israel go into exile far from its country. To Amos, Amaziah said, Go away, seer, get back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, do your prophesying there. We want to know more prophesying in Bethel. This is the royal sanctuary, the national temple. I was no prophet, neither did I belong to any of the brotherhoods of prophets, Amos replied to Amaziah. I was a shepherd and looked after sycamores, but it was the Lord who took me from herding the flock and the Lord who said, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. So listen to the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel. Utter no oracles against the house of Isaac. Very well, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will be forced to go on the streets. Your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land be parceled out by measuring line. And you yourself die on unclean soil. And Israel will go into exile far distant from its own land. The Word of the Lord. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the law is to be trusted, it gives wisdom to the simple. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold. And sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus got in the boat, crossed the water, and came to his own town. Then some people appeared, bringing him a paralytic, stretched out on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, my child, your sins are forgiven. And at this, some scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Knowing what was in their minds, Jesus said, Why do you have such wicked thoughts in your hearts? 
Now, which of these is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, get up, pick up your bed and go off home. And the man got up and went home. A feeling of awe came over the whole crowd when they, all, when they saw this, and they praised God for giving such power to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings begin with a reading from the prophet Amos, where he is found prophesying to the people of Israel and his prophetic messages to them were quite troubling and difficult to accept. Even more so, the prophet Amos, who was called by God, was not from any line of prophets or even highly intellectual. He was actually a shepherd and a farmer looking after sycamore trees. He was not of any important status in the society. He had no credibility, no credentials, and yet, and yet the Lord precisely chose to call him and use him as his instrument to bring God's message to the people and to the king and to confound them in the process. And so this leads us to ask ourselves, are we open enough to listen to others who perhaps don't live up to the reputation that we expect when we get advice or hear a message from someone? Even more so, when the message is something that we don't like hearing about ourselves. Or it may turn our worlds upside down or even burst our bubbles. Can I have the humility and the openness to listen and discern what it is calling forth from me? And if, if that message, difficult and painful as it is, is truly from God, then, as our responsorial psalm mentions, the decrees of the Lord are truth. It revives the soul. They gladden the heart. It gives light to the eyes. Though we must first go through the experience of death in first receiving this difficult and painful message, it will eventually lead us to a change, to the experience of the resurrection to healing, to newness of life. Unfortunately, another obstacle to our receiving of God's message and healing is familiarity. We hear in the gospel that Jesus got in the boat and came to his own town, a place where people knew Jesus so well. We have the phrase, familiarity breeds content. We find that because we are so familiar with someone or seem to know the person so well that we know the ins and the outs of the person that we can't believe, we can't possibly hear anything insightful or anything important from God that would come up from this person. And that happens to us, for most of us, with our family members or our close friends and even our spouses because we're just so familiar with them. And here in our gospel, likewise, Jesus, who had been a familiar face in his town, garnered two different groups of responses towards him. One, an approach and response of openness and trust. And the other from the scribes, a response of judgment and suspicion. It is all right for us to ask questions and to clarify things, but Today's liturgy invites us to ask ourselves, what kind of attitude do we always operate by in regards to others and hence with God? Thus, dear friends, let us ask for God's grace to greater open our hearts to the Lord's promptings and messages, especially when those might be difficult for us to hear, but are true. So together with the Lord, we can recognize and work in on the areas in our lives that needs change, adjustment and healing.
Dear friends, let us as we pray this prayer that Jesus taught us, may we too be open to all that God has to teach and convey to us through others and in our prayer as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.